Do you have piles and piles of magic cards and don't really know what to do? In this video I'll be going over how to organise and sort them and different methods you can do to help you out to have that perfect collection. I'll be going over different methods you can sort out your cards, different ways you can store your cards and helping you out to pretty much have the perfect collection. But before I do any of that, a word from our sponsors. The sponsor of this video is me. I have started an Etsy page where I'm going to try and be selling clothes that I've design thought would be funny thought would be cool thought would be amazing on people's bodies so i literally spent maybe a month or two looking at different resources and stuff to come up with the nicest clothes i could possibly find with the coolest designs that i have done myself with stuff like play mats hoodies t-shirts i'm going to try and do phone cases they're harder than i thought but i do think that it is a really good thing to actually put into so if you would like to help me out or help the channel out please go onto my etsy it will be linked down below and you'll be able to find very nice clothing and also be supporting the channel so links down below and also if there's any other designs i will be putting on any of my social media so please follow me there as well to start off when it comes to this collection you need to figure out what you want to do and here is a few questions you can ask yourself do you collect to build or do you collect to complete? The reason it's important to ask this question is because if you're sorting to build, it's easy to sort it in a way that you can find cards easy to build your decks. Rather that's putting it in whichever sets, so you know a set, or in colour, so if you're building, we'll say, a three colour deck, you don't have to go through a large amount of cards that are in the two colours you don't have. Plus, it'll be easy to find the cards you're looking for. If you're building to collect, then it's just easier to have them in the collection that you want. For example, I collect Mystical Archives and Planeswalkers, so I organise and sort it out in a way that makes it easier for me. So, for example, I will put the Planeswalker, I have a Planeswalker folder, all in alphabetical order. And then with Mystical Archive, the thing is there's a number at the bottom, and I will have them organised with that number, so I know exactly where it is and when I need it. How much time do you have to maintain your collection? So the main reason you're asking this is again two points. If you have like a weekend free and a somewhat a large amount of cards that you're able to do in that weekend, the best thing to do is then and then just take off that weekend, organize all your cards and then you just have to maintain it. However, if you are a very, very busy person, it's better than do it in sections every few nights. So maybe for an hour a night, maybe twice or three times a week. Or if you have less time than that, maybe like once a month for an hour or two. Yes, it is a longer period. However, you're not spending all the time cleaning up the mess. If you have a short weekend, you can just pile everything out, organize it, put it back in. Where if you have shorter time periods, it's better to do it section by section. How much space can you dedicate to sorting and storing your cards? This will vary on different people, mainly because it depends on your living and where you are in the world. So for example, I have this office and a large amount of space, so I'm able to store piles and piles of cards in organizing like the cardboard tubes. However, if someone's in a small apartment thing, they will have to find ways to organize their cards in a smaller space. I have a desk downstairs and upstairs that I'm able to use the full desk for organizing cards. However, some people will only have maybe like a bit of their couch or something along the lines of like a kitchen counter or something. So they'll have to pile on less cards and organize them in a longer like way. Now that you've answered all these questions, the next thing is how are you going to label them? There are three ways I recommend using. One is you can get like these stickers that you're able to write on. So if you have anything like drawers or anything like that that you keep your cards on, you can write whatever you want on it and stick it on the box. I don't recommend sticking on the cards themselves. Next are dividers. You can get these anywhere. This, some of the magic product comes with dividers. I have loads of dividers of random things. I've seen a lot of people use uh, sleeves and they just put a card in and just put them in like their tube or containers. These are really good mainly because if you, for example, I have all my basic lines in different boxes, but I have a like divider taped on top to be like, it's a green land divider. So I know they're my basic green lands. Same with red, white, blue, and all of that. Next thing I've seen people do is they get a cardboard box, cut like sheets out, and then put pieces of paper on saying rather what set symbol it's from or what the way they are organizing it. So they're able to use them as dividers, but with that, you're also able to like stick it on to things and change it whenever you want more freely. 
Now, when it comes to sorting your Magic the Gathering cards, I recommend one of five different ways. Now, you can use multiple of these depending on how big your collection is or how you want to do it. These are just kind of different ways that you can possibly do it to help you out because there might have been a way that you prefer or not have thought of. So the first one is Wooburg Others. So you start off with your Wooburg cards and your four color, three color, two color, and then go white, black, blue, red, green, and then other colors, colorless lands, artifacts, colored artifacts. Uh, so you're able to put them in different colors. So for example, if you're looking for a three color deck again, you're able to just to pull out the three color tube or wherever you keep the three colored cards and go through them, not looking through the rest. The second way is rarity. On each card, there is a symbol from whatever set it is, and they come in different colors. You can have white, black, you can have silver, you can then have gold, and then like a red emeraldy type of color. These are the rarity of the cards. You can set it up so it's one of those things where you have like all your commons in one color, all your res in one color, all your uncommons in one color, and stuff like that. Or you can have it in different ways. Uh, I preferably do both. I put all my comments and comments in that Wooburg uh, type of way, but then I will also have folders where I keep all my rares and mythics. So usually all my comments and comments are in boxes or tubes, and then my rares and mythics are all in folders and stuff like that. Now in saying that, I've been playing for a very long time, so I also now have like small boxes like filled with just rares, but they're usually the rares that are not really worth any money or anything like that. Or if I have duplicates or sets of a certain card that I know I'm not gonna use. I have like 20 souls of Zendikar. The third way and the way I rarely see is types. A lot of people want to build decks, so they put it in instead of what cards, like the color identity or something like that, they put it in their card types. So they will just get all the enchantments, no matter what like color they are, and put them in a draw or something like that for just enchantments. So if they're looking for an enchantment card, they can just look through all their enchantments. Same with creatures, artifacts, lands, and stuff like that. The fourth way and the rarer way I see and the one I probably do not recommend is alphabetical order, mainly because if you have a large, large amount of cards, it is not fun organizing them all in alphabetical order, especially with the amount of colors and different cards from different sets there are. But I've noticed online that some people do do it by alphabetical order. And then finally, sets. Pretty much it's if you know it's from a set, you put it in. So it's all the cards from that set is gonna be in that box. So if you see a card online that you wanna put in your deck, you just have to look for its set symbol and go, it's gonna be in there. Now I've seen people do this, but also do the rarity one at the same time. So if they find an uncommon from a set, they can just go there. But if they find a rare from the set, instead of going through their collection, they have it in their binder because it's just a rare. Now, when it comes to storing your cards, there's many different ways and depending on how good or how rare or how expensive the card is, there's different ways you can do it. Starting off with folders slash binders, depending where you're in the world, I've always heard different, so I'm just gonna say both. Where I'm from, I've always heard them as folders, but I know I have a larger American audience than anywhere else and a few people have gotten confused and have realized that I'm on about binders. These are really good for multiple ways. It is if you have expensive cards, you can put a folder for expensive cards. And then if you have it for like different colors or anything like that, again, different folders for different things. I have six Magic the Gathering folders and I do it usually like I have a Wooburg folder and then I have like a blue red folder and then like a green white folder, mainly because if there's value in the cards and they're rare or mythic, I will usually put them in. So you can start one side at the front and one side at the back. So if I'm looking for like a green card, I'll get like the red green folder and open the back knowing the green cards are at the back. That's the way I've done it. Uh, I am planning on getting more folders and eventually having a folder for each type of color when it comes to Magic the Gathering. The next are mainly for your bulk or the commons and uncommons or the cards that you're never really gonna use. You can get different variations of storage boxes. They're usually the ones I've mainly seen. They're usually big massive boxes with cardboard strips going through it, roughly the size of the cards. You literally could stack them on top of each other or you can get a chest of drawers that also it slides in. And when you pull it out, you can just organize the cards because they're just over the width of a card. So all the cards go in like that. You can fit a lot of cards in that way. The other one is the one I have where it's a set of cardboard uh, drawers that have tubes 
that you can pull out and then you open it up and you can have them along like that. Next is using different boxes. When it comes to Magic the Gathering, you're able to buy a collector's box or something like that. I've seen people just put the cards back in or you can get like the storage boxes that have like the dice and a rare card and a few packs and basic lands. A lot of people use them as well. These are really good just to store cards that you don't really think of or don't really need. So I literally have enough alt art basic lands that have a box that I use for whenever I make a deck, but also tucked away far at the back of the drawer knowing that I'm never really gonna use them as basic land boxes. It's literally five boxes just stacked on top of each other at the back. And just in case I ever need a normal art basic land, I can just go and get that. It's a bit difficult because it's literally like in the back of a draw, but I never need basic lands enough to be able to put in the effort to get it. The other thing I've seen people do is you can buy stuff on Etsy and stuff like that. There's a, I've seen one I kind of wanted myself where it's a giant plastic set of drawers. They usually come by two by two and they just pop out, but you can buy multiple of them and stack them on top of each other. I've also seen people buy old furniture for mailing. So they're like drawers that come out and they would usually have like business cards or people's information. And they would always have like a little metal frame that you were able to slot a piece of paper in. I've seen people buy them type of old furnitures mainly just so you can slide in and fit your cards in. Again, that's more on the expensive side. And if you have a large collection, just fit in the corner of an office or something. Now that you've organized all your cards, here is a few little tips to keep it up so you don't have to do a giant bulk thing again. Have a dedicated space for your cards. So for example, I have a giant drawer that's not really used. And I decided that that's just gonna be all my magic stuff that I'm never gonna really use. So it's mainly all my commons and uncommons are thrown in there in storage boxes. I've seen a lot of people when it comes to uh, my American audience that have like their wardrobe, but the bottom half of it where all the clothes, like the clothes that they hang up is above it, is just dedicated with magic boxes and all their decks and stuff. So they're not pulling up space around the house. They just have it all there. They just take it out, do what they need, put it back. A really big time saver is sorting throughout doing stuff. So for example, if you buy a pack, a single pack, instead of just leaving it there, when you go home, unpack it and just organize it. And then it takes like a few minutes, but again, it's not one of those things that after four months, you have like 20 packs on your desk and then you have to organize them all. If you like work from home or doing a bit of cleaning or something, instead of taking a 10 minute break to sit there and do nothing, take a 10 minute break and just organize cards because it's not like a job or effort and it's a bit of fun. So like, you're like, okay, I'm tired from like cleaning the kitchen. I'm gonna take a 10 minute break while like the kettle is finished boiling or something to organize a handful of cards and then go back to cleaning. It just makes it that you're still active that when you're next job is like ready you don't have to be like oh i just sat down but it's not a load of work that you're just like oh i would rather finish this it's a quick thing that keeps you active so you don't like feel the next job's a chore but it's relaxing enough that you don't feel like you're just sitting there doing nothing the next thing is if you're buying a box or something organize while going through the packs now i know when you open a pack you get excited and you open it and see what's inside but a good thing to do is before you open the next pack, put it in the piles that you want it to be. So by the end, you have the pulp box in different piles that then you can just put in wherever they're supposed to be stored. It's way easier than just flicking through all the packs super fast, then you have to clean up the packs, then you have to organize, and it gives you that little breathing room in between packs that you're like, actually, I got a good card in there, or I didn't, but you're still then looking forward for the next pack. But now the question is, why would you want to organize your cards? One, yes, you are putting this massive time sink into organizing your cards, but it makes the rest easier. You might spend a day or two or maybe a month organizing all your cards, but then maybe like for the next five years, you don't have to do anything. And if you build a deck, you don't have to publish through hours and hours of looking through cards. You know where it could be. It's in that one drawer or that one container and you literally just fire through that and then get that card you need. So you save time in the long run. If you have a friend or something like that, that's like, I'm looking for this card and you have one to either sell or give, you can be like, ha ha, and you know exactly where it is or roughly what container or tube or cardboard container it's in. Uh, another thing is, is when you're organizing your cards, you might find a card that you've never thought you've had before. Like for example, I spent 
three days organizing all my cards and I found out that I had a smothering tide. I did not know I even owned a smothering tide, but going through the cards, I seen a lot of cards that I went, that'll actually be good in a deck. I forgot I had this or this uncommon or this common is better than I thought. Or at the time the card wasn't good, but now that the meta's changed, it's now is and then you might actually come upon a rare or a mythic. Then if you have your rares or mythics in folders or binders, it then keeps them in mint condition. So later on when you're like, if you're ever quitting magic, you still have the ability to sell the cards or if you want to sell the card in general, when the price jumps up, it's in good enough condition that it also keeps the price up. And then also, this isn't for everyone, but organizing cards is very therapeutic. People enjoy it, I do myself. After I get a bit tired, I'm like, oh, I regret doing this. But at the very start, when I'm flicking through cards and seeing all the pretty art and cards I, I'm happy that I got and stuff, I'm like, oh yeah, no, this is actually quite good. But as always, if this video helped at all, let me know in the comments down below. If there's anything I missed or didn't talk about, again, let me know in the comments down below. I love hearing all your comments. Remember while you're down there to like, subscribe and follow, share to a friend and all that youtube -y stuff. But as always, I have a previous amazing video here a playlist of Magic the Gathering stuff here and a subscribe button here and again all the support I'm really loving and I will see you all in the next video.